another little addendum to my upcoming video series in um, off-grid and solar uh, lifestyle, okay? I'm doing a lot of evaluations on a Road Pro uh, off-grid appliances. Now, what they basically are is it's all 12-volt stuff that is trucker and RV-oriented stuff. Usually not very expensive. I think uh, all of their items are under 50 bucks. A lot of them are in the $20, $25 range. And I'm right now, though, I'm, I'm in the Christmas holiday season sales section at a, a common, ordinary Walmart. And we're looking at a lot of other appliances. And what I find on this is the same thing that I've talked about in electronics. So sometimes when you've got the DC-only versions or the off-grid versions of an electronic, if it has any quality at all, it's obscenely expensive. And then quite often, the off-grid electronic is lower capacity, lower quality, and more money than its equivalent on-grid version. And a lot of that has to do with the cost of manufacturing on a lot of these items being spread out over a much wider market. These, these aren't specialized market things. These, these are sold at Walmart. These are very common items. When we look at Road Pro type stuff, it, that's not something that every single person on the planet is necessarily going to be in a market for. Most people in North America are on the grid one way or another. A large portion of the people in Latin America are on a grid one way or another. If they're off-grid, uh, especially in third world countries, they probably also don't have a lot of electricity available to them. They're not necessarily on solar. It, it, up to very recently, solar stuff has been cost prohibitive for the poor who live off-grid. And in a lot of respects, it's been a, we have what I call the poverty of power when somebody is living off-grid, even in the middle class, up till very recently, because only recently did a lot of 12-volt appliances, uh, solar, uh, solar 12-volt uh, stuff become more affordable for people. Only in the last few years did it really realistically become affordable for me. So when I look at the cost and capacity on a lot of these appliances, one of the things we look at is whether or not we're even going to apply the poverty of power concept to these things. Because part of one market that they do approach a lot with this stuff is people who live in dorms, room rentals, places without a full kitchen, or, or they, they have a living situation, they don't have access to their own kitchen. So people will get these small appliances, which are of varying quality, usually pretty decent. Usually quality issues are, are sorted out before these items make it to Walmart. And they, they can cook in dorms and, and apartments and small places, and that's where a lot of this comes in. And, and it's, it's not very expensive stuff, although people would argue that to get all of the cooking capacity you would have out of all of these, you might as well go buy a regular stove. You know, that's a matter of opinion. Uh, I've used a lot of these types of things. I, I, I use them at home. There's so many people using this stuff. They just, you know, it, it's not worth it for me to do reviews on them. But if you are on grid, sure, you know, having a bunch of this stuff so you can cook. I mean, you know, I mean, it's kind of neat to have. The other thing is you can, you can pick it up at the thrift stores. It's just that I prefer to buy food-related items new if I can. Unless it's just everything about it is stainless steel, then you know you can sterilize it. So what happens is, if you want to use this stuff off-grid, you, you pretty much have to use it with an inverter. Some of these items are more inverter-friendly than others, and I've tested several of these on the inverters. Uh, Crock-pots, you can pretty much figure they're going to work off an inverter, no problem at all. Uh, the deep fryers vary a little bit. I'm, I'm open to opinions. Maybe I'll test a couple. I had one of these in the past, but these things used to go on sale for a lot less. And but basically, smaller the better as far as taxing your batteries goes. If you have a large solar array and you can produce the electricity as fast as you're using it, that's fine. But what happens is these things are going to eat your batteries down in a hurry. So, for example, I really like this oven. I'm thinking about buying it. Only 99 bucks. I, I looked at, you, you, you look at the back labels on these things, see how many watts they use. This uses 1,500 watts. 
my solar arrays, my, my solar arrays tend to run at about 500 watts each, which means that I couldn't bake anything for all that long unless it's like right in the middle of the day in the summertime. Well, how, how long, you know, how much you want baked food in the middle of the day in the summertime? See, see what I mean? See how that can run into an issue? And I don't want to run a generator to bake a loaf of bread, so that's not particularly efficient. If I have a huge battery bank, and maybe my battery bank is topped off, and I haven't used it much that night, and I want to bake something throughout the day, well, maybe that starts to make a little sense, okay? The other thing is that when we get into the DC to AC uh, conversion process, there's two things we're going to look at. One is watts, the other is amps. And as, let's say, I don't want to move this one again, but let's say one of these smaller units here, this little $30 Black & Decker unit, we are looking at power consumption on watts, but that's not the entire story. So we look for the label, uh, the label on the other one. Oh crap, this one's on the bottom. All right, let me find one where I can get at the label more easily. Um, here we go. Okay, so here's how you read this. Okay, now this says it's 1150 watts. And then the other question is, do we have any kind of an amp rating here? and it looks like I don't but I do know something I know that this is made to plug into a 15 amp electrical outlet and probably not burn that outlet out I know that 1150 watts is somewhere in the 7 amp range roughly 7 or 8 amps so realistically by the time I lose a little bit of power in a conversion process if I've got a power system that's three uh, seven or eight amp panels and I'm losing a little power in a conversion process I could probably use this little saw thing in the daytime using it at night it's going to burn my batteries down in a hurry but in the daytime I'm probably going to be okay the other thing about anything that uses like a little heated element type of deal is they they get going and they get going and whatever watts it says it is is just that's what it uses okay microwaves take a power spike to get started and that's where microwaves tend to react badly with the inverters but that varies a little bit from microwave to microwave and you may end up in a situation where you burn out both your appliance and your inverter at an accelerated rate because you're using them together. Here's another situation where you make an adult decision on what you're going to be using it for, what you feel the replacement supply situation is, and what's realistic with your equipment capabilities. These little microwaves are $49 each. Uh, I remember it's a 700 watt microwave, but I can tell you this, it, it almost takes a 5,000 watt inverter to get that thing to work. Uh, I've used these on 2,000 watt inverters and they're sluggish. On the other hand, if I purchase a wave box 12 volt microwave, those are $350. So let's make an adult decision. How many microwaves, how many cheap $49 microwaves am I willing to burn out because I don't want to buy a $350 wave box 12 volt microwave which actually requires its own special wiring circuit to work with a battery system how's your decision want to make on that as a guy who let's say would be I don't know if I call myself an expert but as a knowledgeable person giving somebody advice I, I can't even give solid advice without seeing what somebody's situation is because once you've spent that $350 on that wave box, it has very little resale value. It, it's very small capacity. They're, they're physically, I think, even a little bit smaller than these things. And they, they run almost as much of a chance of burning out as anything else does. And it's, it's $350 bucks to play, okay? So when you're talking off-grid use and you've got, let's say, you've got your 3,000 watt inverter, which should be able to run pretty much anything on these shelves, then you've spent, you know, a couple hundred bucks on that 3,000 watt inverter, but then you're buying cheap appliances, and yeah, you, you may burn something out from time to time, but the cost is such 
that remember you're not having power bills you didn't pay to have power run out to the property you didn't pay for the rental costs of let's say a property that already has power going to it you, you have to make your own adult decisions on whether you're th where you're saving the money if you're living in the middle of the city and just want to cut the wires and go off grid you're going to find it's not particularly cost effective if you're mobile and let's say you can spend two weeks out of the month not at an RV park, not plugged in, or uh, uh, a month or two out on the water without being plugged in, then that's where a lot of real cost saving comes in. And it becomes worth it to use ordinary conventional tabletop appliances with an inverter.